MedSLP Tools Part 2 Dysphagia Therapy Tools Clinicians, including medical SLPs, love their tools. We want more than just perceptions and guesstimates. We want hands-on tools that can directly help us help our patients achieve their goals. This is why I'm doing a part two about MedSLP tools. In part one, I shared the top three tools MedSLPs inside of the MedSLP Collective reported using daily. Make sure to check out that episode after you watch this. We'll link it below. The top three items MedSLP Collective members reported using most often were geared towards dysphagia assessments. So today we're going to focus specifically on dysphagia therapy tools. While there are endless dysphagia therapy tools out there, I'm going to highlight three categories of tools SLPs can use during dysphagia therapy. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Biofeedback. When it comes to teaching exercises and tracking performance, swallowing exercises probably rank as some of the most difficult exercises to clearly teach and measure. If we want to improve laryngeal elevation and show our patients exercises that target specific muscles, it's hard to truly assess whether or not the patient is able to demonstrate that exercise accurately if all we can do is look at and feel their throat. From a carryover perspective, patients might struggle to keep up with their exercise program if they have no way of live tracking their progress. This is where biofeedback tools come in. Biofeedback is a technique that involves visual, tactile, or auditory feedback to show you what your body is actually doing. A mirror is an example of a low-tech approach and can help patients better see what their tongue, head, and neck are doing. An example of high-tech visual feedback that SLPs can use during dysphagia therapy is surface electromyography, or SEMG. SEMG uses sensors or electrodes to detect and measure their electrical activity of your muscles as they contract. This information is recorded and translated into a graph or other visual interpretations that you and your patient can see. A popular tool that SLPs and patients can use to visualize swallowing is Mobility by TrueAngle. Mobility is a mobile biofeedback tool SLPs and patients can use to measure and monitor dysphagia exercise performance. It uses an under the chin sensor that connects to a mobile app on your phone so you and your patients can actually see the swallowing exercise. Not only does this help patients complete an exercise, but it helps them adhere to it. The direct visual feedback provides improved guidance and motivation to keep going with and without an SLP present. Of course, an SLP needs to be present for effective planning and training. This tool is not meant to replace clinicians. It's a wonderful supplement to improve outcomes and carryover. I don't have any disclosures or affiliations with Mobility. I just think it's a great product and wanted to share it with you. Dr. Gabby Constantinescu, who is an SLP and research associate with TrueAngle, the company behind Mobility, provided a deep dive eight hour course for MedSLPEducation.com dedicated to biofeedback and dysphagia therapy. Before we released this course, she told us this motivational story about a patient who agreed to be a research participant in a study that tested a new version of Mobility. You can find this paper published in the American Journal of Speech-Language Pathology titled Adherence to Home-Based Swallowing Therapy Using a Mobile System in Head and Neck Cancer Survivors. This participant told Gabby that she joined the study after she had heard about mobility in a support group for head and neck cancer patients. She wanted to give back to the research community after receiving such excellent care. She told Gabby that she had no expectations that her swallow would actually improve. She was only there to help a PhD student get through the program while giving back to science. This participant took the mobility biofeedback device home and completed her dysphagia exercises for six weeks. One night, Gabby received an email at 2 a.m. from this participant. The email said, I can feel my muscles are moving. I can feel things are starting to come alive. She wrote this email while sitting in the McDonald's parking lot with a cheeseburger on her lap. For the first time in years, she was able to eat a cheeseburger, and through her tears of joy, Gabby was the first person she told. 
Just another humanizing example of why we do what we do as SLPs and how technology like biofeedback can help. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't want to miss, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also, do you have any specific questions about biofeedback or other dysphagia tools? Leave a comment below and tell me about it. We'll be sure to get your questions answered as soon as possible. Neuromuscular Electrical Stimulation, or NMES. NMES is a popular topic in the MetaSLP world, and with good reason. There are a variety of NMES devices that exist, but they're not all the same. Let's start with a basic definition of NMES and how it helps patients with dysphagia. Neuromuscular electrical stimulation is a method of stimulating muscles with short electrical pulses and can be used in therapy for patients with a mechanical dysphagia. To get a little more technical, NMES depolarizes nerve fibers at the point of attachment, which induces a muscle contraction, says Park et al. in 2019. However, simply sticking electrodes onto various parts of the throat and turning on electrical stimulation isn't what's suggested or grounded in evidence. SLPs must first get trained and certified to use an NMES device and pair this treatment modality with traditional exercises. NMES devices on the market for SLPs who treat dysphagia include AmpCare, VitalStim, and Guardian. It's important that you, as the medical SLP, do your research with each device to understand the differences between each device and their features, treatment approach, cost, evidence, and FDA clearance for use. Now, I've personally taken the AMP Care training, and one of the many reasons why I love their course is the in-depth education on cranial nerves, nerve fiber types, and exercise science specific to dysphagia. I learned that there's a lot more to NMES and dysphagia therapy than simply providing electrical stimulation to muscles. I will disclose that AmpCare is a sponsor of the MetaSLP Collective, but I also was a proud user of the product before that. Apps. I briefly touched on apps when I discussed biofeedback and SEMG, but did you know there's a whole world of apps out there for SLPs and patients with dysphagia? Most people have either an iPad or a smartphone that will allow them to download apps, and we can expect technology to only grow and become increasingly accessible in the future. Some apps that are available for patients with dysphagia include Dysphagia Therapy by Tactus Therapy Solutions, Swallow Prompt by Speech Tools Limited, Swallow Rehab by Rehab Mobile Health, Dysphagia by Northern Speech Services, and Dysphagia To Go by Smarty Ears. These apps can help you and your patients do things like set up an at-home dysphagia exercise plan with daily reminders, see video and picture demonstrations of specific dysphagia exercises, track dysphagia exercises, provide reminders to swallow for patients who have difficulty managing their saliva, teach and show your patient swallow anatomy, cranial nerves, treatment options, and downloadable patient handouts. Provide visuals of typical swallows and impaired swallows through video animations to help your patients better understand what's happening inside of their throat. And keep track of your notes and observations while tracking progress and changes. Some apps offer free light versions, while others require some sort of payment, whether it's a one-time payment or a recurring subscription. I have no disclosure with any of the apps that I mentioned. Incorporating apps into your therapy as well as an at-home plan can increase adherence, the accuracy of data tracking, and outcomes when used appropriately and consistently. But remember, apps cannot and should not replace you or your therapy planning. They can be a wonderful supplement to the evidence-based treatment plan you create after you collect all of your subjective and objective data from your dysphagia assessments. A colleague of mine shared a story about a patient she had with dysphagia who wasn't all that familiar with iPads and smartphones, but had plenty of children and grandchildren who were eager to support her. Her daughter purchased an iPad and joined several dysphagia therapy sessions to see the swallowing exercises my colleague was instructing her mom to do. My colleague had her download several dysphagia apps, one to track her home exercise plan and set reminders, and another to provide education specific to swallowing and the swallowing impairments she was diagnosed with. Her patient's entire family supported her at home, 
occasionally attempting to do the exercises with her and celebrating her progress each time they tracked her exercises together. She made tremendous improvements after one month of dysphagia therapy and was eventually able to celebrate with her favorite home-cooked dish. She told my colleague that she didn't think this would have been possible had she not had the support of her family and the at-home exercise program set up on her iPad. She felt that this made it easy for everyone to know exactly what her plan was while also knowing how to support her. I've got a free gift for you over at metaslpcollective.com. You'll get instant access to our free MetaSLP Collective clipboard kit. We also have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases. Head over to metaslpcollective.com now to get your hands on this. The link will be in the description below.